everyone, it's Rachel here from the Hot Chocolate Styled Stock Library. I recently had a question from a member who wanted to know how to create graphics using the graphics packs that we provide to you every month and Photoshop. So I know we already have some uh, tutorials on how to do this in Canva, but if you are interested in learning how to do it in Photoshop, this video is going to show you how. So what you'll want to do is just grab the graphics pack that you want to use, log into the members library, and uh, you can download any of the graphics packs that we have available, and then go ahead and open up Photoshop. All right, so once you're in Photoshop, you want to create a new document. So go to File New, and I am going to create a, um, let's say, an Instagram quote or a social media quote image. So I'll make it 1080 by 1080 pixels. You can change if yours is on inches or whatever, just change it to pixels. So 1080 by 1080, uh, resolution 72 pixels per inch is perfect for web, and then you can go ahead and give it a name and hit OK. So that's going to open up your artboard over here. All right, so now how do we get the graphics into Photoshop? There's a couple of ways you can do this. You could go to File, Place Embedded, and then that's gonna allow you to pull up a file. Or if you want to, you can also just click and drag one of the background images into this file in Photoshop. So I'll show you how to do that. Uh, so I have the blush collection open. I'm gonna go to Backgrounds, Let's say I want to do the gray marble. I'm just going to click it and drag it in. So Photoshop's going to place it into my file. And now I just want to resize it to make it larger so that it covers the entire canvas. So I'm going to click with my mouse, hold it down, drag it over to the corner. And then I'm going to click on one of these corners here and hold down shift and then click and drag down with my mouse. So holding down shift, actually just allows you to constrain the proportions so that it stays uh, as a square. When I'm ready, I'm just gonna hit enter and now it's placed inside my artboard. I can still move it around if I need to. So this is kind of the background for our quote image. Now let's say we wanna add some more elements to it. We've got some really pretty borders that uh, are included in this blush graphics pack. So if I wanted to do the copper border here, again, I would just click and drag it in. Oh, whoops, click and drag it in. And I could leave it this size if I wanted to, or again, I could just click and make it larger. It's totally up to you. So if I'm happy with it at this size, that's great. Now what I might wanna do is if the marble background is gonna stay, I'm not gonna move it around, I could always just lock it so that when I go to grab uh, something else, I'm not moving the marble. So if I wanna grab uh, this border and just adjust it so that it's centered, I can do that. Now you might see those purple lines and wonder what they are. So if you go to view, you can add rulers and snap. I always have those on. And then go to show and then go to smart guides. Those purple lines are the smart guides and they just tell you where um, kind of the center or how things are aligning on your page. I really like using them. It makes it really easy. If you've used Canva, Canva before, it's a, a similar type of thing. All right, so let's say now that I want to go ahead and add some text. I'm going to hit T on my keyboard, and then I can type out whatever quote I want to add in this image. All right, so when I'm done, you can see this font doesn't really show up very well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to my character panel, click on it, and then I can make changes to my fonts. If you don't see this up here, go to Window, and then check Character, and it'll show up for you. So I can go ahead and change the font if I want to. Okay, let's say that I'm going to use this one. I can go ahead and make it smaller. I can make it larger. Okay, so if you're happy with how that looks, go to Layer. Flatten image. That's just going to merge all of these layers for you and then file and save. So you want to save this as a JPEG or a PNG if you are going to be using it on the web. Now let's just say you didn't want to use one of the background uh, graphics but you wanted to use a photo. Let me just show you how to do that. So I'm going to unlock this layer and I'm just going to hit delete to get rid of it and then I'm going to open up one of my photos. Let's just place that one so let's say that I want to use one of the images from our new pink collection. I'm going to click on it, 
and hit place. And so it's just going to place it in here for me. And what I can do is just click and drag it out and just kind of place it wherever I want. So let's say I want this part of the image. Okay, so I'm going to hit enter. Now as you can see, it's actually on top of my text and my frame. So what I'll do is I'll come over here to where the layers are and I click and just drag it down underneath. Now obviously it is hard to see the text because there's just too much going on in the background. Uh, there's not enough white space in this photo. So what you can do is you can create a little square in this case to go over this area where we have our frame and it's just going to go in behind the text. So what I'll do is I'll click over here in my uh, tools panel on the shapes and you have some different options here so you can see the fill, the stroke, there's no stroke on my uh, shape that I'm going to create which is what I want and the fill is already a pink color so I think I'm just going to leave that for now but otherwise you could just change it by clicking on any of these colors or clicking up here and choosing your own color. Most of the time I just do white anyways, but just to show you. Okay, so I've clicked and dragged that out. I'm gonna hit enter. Now again, it's over top, so I'm just gonna drag it down below. All right, so I could leave it like this if I liked how that looked, or I could also bring down the opacity if I wanted to show a little bit more of the photo. So that's an option for this specific photo, just because there's so much going on in it, I probably wouldn't. I would probably just leave it at 100% if that was what you wanted to do. Okay, so that is another option. Let's say that I had a different photo that I wanted to use. For example, let's say this one. This one has a lot of white space. So I'm going to click and drag it out until it fits, holding down my shift key so that it's the proper proportions are maintained. Okay, um, so I don't really need to have these happening here. So what I can do now, I just deleted the other layers that I didn't want. I can rotate this text so that it's kind of more proportionate to the page. And then if I wanted to add, you know, some extra embellishments or something, I could always come over and see what kind of icons we have in the graphics pack. So we've got like this cute hexagon. I could add that in there and just um, making it smaller, holding down shift. Again, I'm going to rotate it so that it's kind of going in the same direction as the paper. And then I can Whoops. All right, so I'm gonna just lock my paper so that it doesn't move and then I'm gonna click and drag so I can um, move this hexagon over a little bit. So that might be an option if you wanted to do that. We've got some really pretty brush strokes in here as well. So they're also an option um, for adding, you know, some different elements and really like having fun with it and playing with the graphics and making them your own. So maybe then just get rid of the hexagon. It doesn't necessarily need to be there. If you're willing to experiment and play around with the graphics packs, then you can create some pretty unique looking designs. You can also save them as templates so that you don't have to go back and recreate a bunch of work. So once you find something that you really like, a, you know, a specific design or layout that you're really happy with, then keep it as a template. And then you can just go back and all you have to do is maybe change out the photo and change out the quote and you're good to go. So in order to do that, what you're gonna do is go file, save and you are going to save this as a PSD file. So what that means is that all the layers are going to be saved and you're going to be able to then go back in there and just make edits. So swap out a photo, swap out the text and you have a new graphic instantly. You don't have to play around with starting from scratch. You don't have to play around with the layout or anything like that. So just make sure it's a PSD file. When you're done and you want to save it uh, to upload to the web, save it as either a JPEG or a PNG. All right, so hopefully that was helpful. Just a little intro into how to edit and create graphics inside of Photoshop.